What up and welcome to the Beneath the Dirt Podcast. I'm your host, Rome Bone. Thank you for tuning in. Episode 213 in the motherfucking how was good, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Whether you're on the YouTube or your favorite podcast and apps, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. All that good shit, man. Yeah. How the fuck y'all doing this week? Yeah. I think I calmed down a little bit this week. From last week, I think we... We a little more chill this week. I think we'll see. Maybe. Maybe not. We got a bunch of shit to talk about. Let's get into it. Right off the bat, I want to send a shout out to Chris for sending in a donation this week. Much love for sending in the donation. Love that shit. Uh, he says, keep killing it. By the way, is your merch store down? Matter of fact, it is not down. It is not down. I did check it to see that it was up. Sometimes the store frontier website runs slow. So maybe you were experiencing a just experiencing it running slow, but the merch store is still up, still got the t-shirts, still got the hoodies up for sale. Matter of fact, there was a variant, uh, a green colored variant of the design that I have up now that was up for sale that I had mistakenly put up there. Uh, I, had the intent of doing that for somebody else. Uh, it was for actually for Stockwell. I made a green variant and a blue variant. Ended up sending them the blue one. The green one I forgot to take down from the web store. And somebody actually bought it. Shout out to the person that bought it. I have, It's got to have been at least a month since it's been up. And one person bought it. Congratulations. You are the proud owner of a one of one green beneath the dirt shirt fucking fresh for you and yeah merch store is still up thank you again for the donation now let's get into some new music we got some fucking heat that dropped this week if i say so myself uh we got low key he's back he just dropped the neon sermon project not too long ago but he's back with his new single burn the witch the first single off his next album produced entirely by Seven. Full horrorcore project, Burn the Witch. The first single off the album. And this shit is dope. I wouldn't even necessarily say that this is wicked shit horrorcore though. This particular song. It's a good song. Don't get me wrong, but... Kind of. Like the theme of the song is... Like the second verse, he talks about people getting canceled for some shit that you said or some shit that you did. And all of a sudden you become the witch and it's burn that witch. You know, burn the fucking witch. Which which I think is dope. And I think the first verse is like political shit. You know, if you're on one side or another, you become the witch. Burn the witch, I think. I listened to the song one time. But I think I got the basic idea of, you know, you could become the witch. People rally against you and you become the witch. You know, you remember the the Salem witch hunt back in the day, 1692, right? Salem witch trials, all that shit. People being hung. Salem, Massachusetts. Because motherfuckers were just wilding the fuck out. But yeah, new low-key single. First single off his upcoming album. Probably drop next year. He says he's dropping a single every three weeks until the album is out. Forget how many tracks he said, if he said there was how many songs. But Burn the Witch is fire, and as promised, Batty Bat dropped her first single, also of Neon Sermon. She dropped her first single off her as-of-yet-untitled full-length album. I don't remember if there was a name for the album. The song is called All That Awaits You, and this shit is dope. Rock, singing... She even incorporates a little bit of the singing in it, and it works so goddamn good. Dare I say, the Batty Bat single is better than the Low Key single? I don't know, because this shit is fire. Fire. I was really surprised at this song. I was surprised at her last single that she had put out as well. Better Off Dead, that shit was fire. This new song, Better Off Dead, was more mellow. This is more rock in your face, but she's still singing. 
again, incorporating a little bit of that screaming. I dig it. If this is the the way Batty Bat is going to go from here on out, I'm here for it. It sounds good. It's dope. Again, maybe better than the low-key single that dropped. Let me know what the fuck you think. Let me know what you think after you go and listen to it. When you're done listening to this shit. Because both singles are fire. We're off to a good start. Um, Yeah. Low-key produced by Seven, man. That's the shit we needed that we didn't know we needed. Or the shit that we knew we needed. Because Seven is a monster producer. But we already all knew that shit. There was work with Strange Music and all that shit. Next single up, we're going to talk about Kung Fu Vampire. Back with his new single, How I'm Living. Again, produced by Seven. Seven is every, working with everybody in the underground right now. And I love to see it. It's very dope. Kung Fu Vampire, a dude that just gets better and better with each release. I remember hearing him back in the day when he opened up for ICP. Bang Bao, Bang Pao Boom Tour, maybe? Or was it Twisted? It was like, oh, 809. I don't know. Wasn't a fan then. But over the years, keep, you know, he kept putting music out, staying in the scene, staying consistent, putting shit out. And it just got better and better with every release. His new shit is fire. This new single is super dope. How I'm living. Love the production from Mike Seven Summers. Kung Fu Vampire kills it on the song, man. Like I said, just gets better with age. His last album, Come Done, was one of my favorites of 2020. I believe that came out 2020, right? 2019. Shit, it's been three years since Come Done came out. It's been three fucking years since his last album. I know we got Double Dragon last year, but shit. I'm hyped. For new Kung Fu Vampire. I think it's Black Heart Machine. His new album. That's what it's called. I'm fucking hyped for it though. How I'm Living. New Kung Fu is dope. If you're a fan. Then you already know. If you don't know. Now you know. Go peep the shit. Son. Because the shit is fire. Another single. I don't remember if we've ever talked about this dude on this show before. Tier Diaz. He's done some sh- He was on the Walking Home Monday song with Violent J for a couple bars. He's one of the characters in that uh, new album, I guess, Violent J got coming out at some point. You know, we're still waiting for that Walking Home series. But Tierra Diaz, he's been putting it down for years. He's another one from Worcester, Massachusetts, my hometown. Tierra has been putting it down for a long ass time. I remember when this dude. Went by the name Killer T. This dude had a song called Kill Spree. Killer T, Kill Spree. Look that shit up. That song is fire. This new shit that he got is called Stuck in Michigan. Trunk full of Fago. He's got it's a little two-pack he dropped. You got the original version, which is produced by Mike P. And then you got a version, the DJ Drakenstein mix. Trunk full of Fago. Remix to the song. And, uh, yeah, we got a little bit of storytelling in here. He shouts out Violent J on this song. Not a bad single. Not my favorite shit from T, but not a bad single. And he's one of the few from Worcester Mass that I really fuck with that put out music. So go peep that shit if you haven't yet. Tier Diaz, stuck in Michigan, trunk full of Fago. Shit. Got Dang, imagine having a trunk full of Fago. That's a trunk full of diabetes in that motherfucker. Shit. That's what I'm fucking saying. (laughs) Oh, fuck. That's what the fuck I'm saying. Diabetes is a motherfucker. Don't drink too much Fago, y'all. And then we got the first single from Mad Child and Obnoxious, their upcoming album. Now, we've talked about this before. It was announced that they're working on a project together. Obnoxious. I thought his new album was supposed to drop this month. What happened to that? We ain't getting no news on Obnoxious's album. Pre-orders have been up for that for a while. But we ain't getting no news 
on Obnoxious's album Sick Audio, but we got instead of getting his new album, we got the new single for Mad Child and Obnoxious collaboration album. The song is called Blackout. I want to say C. Lance produced this, but I'm not sure. Beat is fucking fire. Obnoxious and Mad Child killed it. Mad Child, this is the shit I'm talking about. This is the shit we need to hear Mad Child on. Just that grimy hip hop shit, man. Bring it back. Bring it back to like the dope sick shit. Lawnmower man shit. The stuff that he was doing when he first broke out from Swollen Members and started doing his solo shit. Killing it. Obnoxious kills it on here as well, man. This is the production I like hearing Obnoxious on. This project with Obnoxious and Mad Child, I'm looking forward more forward to this than I think I was King Click. Obnoxious and Mad Child makes more sense than him pairing up with Chucky Chuck and Johnny Richter. Um, because he's a rapping, rapping ass motherfucker, man. This dude raps his ass off, syllables, all that shit, punchlines. And Ch- Chucky and Johnny Richter, all due respect, I fucking love them. The music that they've put out over the years, they're they're not rapping as rappers. You know, they ain't rapping the rap, rap, rapity rap, lyrical miracle shit. But Mad Child is, and this is a dope ass combination. I'm looking forward to it. The new single Blackout is fucking fire. Super dope. I, I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you're a fan of the older solo Mad Child shit. I wouldn't say swollen, maybe later swollen members ish. Beautiful Death Machine. Fucking yeah, that type of shit, but this new single is fire. And their album. Pre orders are actually up for the album right now with the track list up on uh the Suburban Noise web store. The album is dropping October 21st. So less than two months from now, the album. We actually have a release date for this shit. But no release date for Obnoxious Sick Audio. I'm looking forward to that, man. But Mobsters and Monsters is the new album from Obnoxious and Mad Child. Album drops October 21st. Features from Sick Jackin, Henry AZ, and Ouija Mac. Remember a while back, we saw... I think it was either Mad Child or Obnoxious posted a picture of Ouija in the studio with Ouija. It's Ouija on the fucking album. 11 tracks. Minimal on the features. I like that. The album cover looks dope. Pre-orders are up, like I said. And this album, I'm excited to hear this album, man. It's just going to be two dudes rapping their fucking ass off. On hopefully some dope ass production. If they got C Lance involved, which Mad Child usually got C Lance involved with all his shit, you know this is gonna be a fire ass project. Cause I mean shit. C Lance, the art of uh The Undying Flame, his album that he put out this year. One of my favorite projects this year. He absolutely killed it. Mobsters and Monsters, Mad Child, Obnoxious. I think we're going to be in for a treat with that one. Even people unfamiliar with Obnoxious, I think this will be a better introduction for Obnoxious than the King Click album was. But we'll just have to wait and see, man. New single, though, Blackout is fucking fire. There's a video out for it, too. Not a, not, not a crazy video, but it looks dope. Your shit don't have to be super complex to have a su- super dope video, man. It just don't, but it... You know, it just got to fucking look good, be edited good, all that good shit, man. But yeah, go peep that shit if you haven't yet. And of course, all the songs that we talk about, new releases that we talk about are on the Beneath the Dirt Weekly Bumps playlist. Go peep that shit. I plug it every week, but we ain't fucking stopping. I plug it every single week for a goddamn reason. Follow that shit. I curate dope ass playlists every week. So go peep that shit. And go buy the merch while you at it. I never plug the merch. I feel It feels weird. But, I mean, I got it up there. Go buy the shit, man. But, yeah. Let's get into the main news story this week. 
Juggalos can name the fucking six Jokers card of the second deck? What? Violent J took to the social medias late last week. He says, Ninjas, here's your chance to be mad creative and win shit while doing it. Got an idea for what you think ICP's next Jokers card, the sixth of the of deck two, should be? Let's see it. My daughter Ruby has an awesome Joker's Card creation contest going on right now over at her new and existing Discord server. Click the link and go check it out, Violent J. So I guess Violent J's daughter got a little contest going. Name the sixth of the second deck. I thought the sixth of the second deck was going to be the Wraith Shangri-La in Hell's Pit again. Don't make too much sense to me, that shit. But that's what I thought it was. That's how he explained it. I've seen people comment that shit, that it's going to be the Wraith and all this other shit. And it turns out that, I guess if you actually go to the Discord server, it's just a contest to see who comes up with creative creative names for an album. It's not going to be like the actual name of the album that comes out. So, yeah. Ruby up on Discord or whatever. Everybody got a motherfucking Discord these days, huh? I'm seeing everybody got Discords. People be hitting me up to join Discord servers, and I do, and I never follow through with it, man. I just, I'm part of a few fucking uh, communities. I've had a couple of people hit me up talking about they want me to be a part of their uh, Discord servers and shit a while back. I even created my own Discord server a couple years ago, at least a couple years ago. Never did anything with it. Never invited nobody, nothing. Um, but yeah, the sixth. So if I were to come up with a name, right? This is like, it's like some Build-A-Bear type shit. Create a card, right? Or build a card, if you will. Remember back in the day, everybody was speculating on what the six would be called? I remember the Red Magician. The Red Magician was a, was a name that was up on those Angel Fire websites and Malenko 500s and... Real juggalos and all that shit back in the day. The Red Magician. I can't remember any others. I've seen somebody comment uh, somewhere. A couple of the other names that I recognize from back in the day. But if you could name a Joker's card. It doesn't even have to be the sixth. If you could name the Joker's card, what would it be? It would have to be like the Fantastic Fuck Buddies. And then you just gotta... It'd be a two-part deck of... You know, two people, and they're the fantastic fuck buddies. <laughs> I just came up with that off the top of my head, but I don't know, man. I don't know what the fuck I would call a Joker's card. I tried thinking about it, but it's not really worth putting the fucking energy into, to be honest. I got other shit to fucking think about and all that shit, but yeah. Um... You can name the six, build a Joker's card. What the fuck are you going to call it? I don't know, man. I thought it was funny, man. Like, again, what the fuck are we doing out here, right? Let's just let's just keep it real. What the fuck are we doing out here? Why is Violent J promoting his daughter's Discord? Like, it's, it's just, I don't know. I have no interest in joining. Like, when he announced that she was on Twitter, I had no interest in following her. Same with JJ with his Twitch channel and shit. I had no interest in following. Even though I'd be more apt to follow the Twitch channel, because I don't mind watching video games and shit like that. But just, I don't know, man. It's just... I guess it's the old school juggalo in me. I, like, I just don't fucking care. Not to be an asshole, but to be an asshole, I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Sounds about right. And I'm sorry I'm not sorry, I guess. So name your fucking six Joker's card. What would it be? I have no fucking idea, man. Don't ask me because I ain't got a fucking clue. And it's a slow fucking news week, if you can't tell. Because we're sitting here talking about some fucking... Name of fucking Joker's car shit. Now, if there was like, if this was a contest put on by ICP and they gave away, gave away some ill fucking jerseys or fucking whatever, some kind of contest just to see what kind of creative names, 
or if it was to actually name an album, you know, that would be that would be pretty dope. I'd put out I'd actually call it the the Bloody Brothers, right? I'd call it the Bloody Brothers. Uh the distant cousins to the amazing Jekyll brothers, uh rednecks from the south who just go on a murderous rampage and kill people, right? Uh but then 20 years later put out uh a shitty country song. <laughs> What am I doing, man? I just got to move on. I got to move on. Next fucking twisted. They announced their next tour with Blaze Your Dead Homie and ABK and uh, uh, Axe Murder Boys and Cody Manson. Midwest to West Coast. Fuck the East Coast. Even though Twisted is uh was just on the East Coast. Performing at some uh, Ice Nine Kills shit. I know they'll be in Hartford next month. But, uh, yeah. This looks like it's going to be not rock twisted. We got the picture on the flyer. This is some old school drive-by shit. Remember when drive-by was Twisted Blaze and ABK? Talked about it on the show before. Go look at Cryptic Collection 3. The drive-by song is Twisted Blaze and ABK, it's just listed as drive by. It was before drive by eventually became just Blaze and ABK. Drive by was originally Twisted Blaze and ABK, now known as East Side Ninjas. But we got the Certified Psychos Tour. The Certified Psychos Tour. Um, yeah. This would be a fucking tour I'd be hyped to go see, man. I love the flyers, just old school. ABK, old school, the long ass braids and shit. Mirror, mirror, twisted. One last G blaze look right there. That shit's dope. So yeah, they're hitting the road. September 28th, starting out in Omaha, Nebraska. Finishing up October 21st in Joliet, Illinois. And then... A few days after that, Fright Fest in Detroit at St. Andrews Hall. Don't forget about that shit. But that tour, that tour looks like one that uh, I would be interested in. And keeping it twisted, we I announced a couple months back, or maybe about a month ago, there was a music fest going down called the Three Stacks Music Fest. They had, uh, what was it, Flatbush Zombies, Snow the Product, Twisted, Ouija Mac. I think Echo was on that shit. A whole bunch of shit. It looked like a dope festival. It was a, it was a pretty dope lineup. The festival has been canceled. Due, it says, due to circumstances beyond our control, Three Stacks Music Fest will no longer be taking place this year. We were looking forward to giving you the high energetic show that you have come to love. Stay tuned. Three Stacks Music Fest will return in 2023. Refunds will be sent out immediately. So if you did buy a ticket to go see Twisted at this three and Ouija at this Three Stacks Music Fest, it ain't fucking happening. Shit's canceled, unfortunately. Um, it would have been dope to see Ouija and Twisted on the same show. You know, for a ninja like me who likes who likes both, that shit would have been dope to see both on the same show. We ain't got to get along or anything like that, but performing on the same bill, why the fuck not? Sounded like a fucking good-ass time to me. And then Snow the Product, Flatbush Zombies. Flatbush Zombies are dope. If you don't know, go peep those dudes. Those dudes are fucking fresh. And then Axe Murder Boys. We just talked about them hitting the road with Twisted. Their Muerte album is now available on 12-inch vinyl. Uh, I think limited to only 250 made, it says. There's a bundle, vinyl and CD only. It seems like Magic Ninja just can't get rid of those fucking CDs, man. No matter what, how they bundle it, give it away, sales, all that shit. They just can't get rid of that CD stock that they got. Maybe they should think about doing limited runs. I know limited is not always fun. And again, you know, it goes back to that whole shit of... Not giving everybody the chance, but hey, if you want that shit, give an, a, give an incentive for it. And if you want to sell it, create a dope-ass package, create limited supplies. And yeah, but yeah, 
uh, off my tangent, Axe Murder Boys Muerte, 12-inch vinyl and CD, bundle up now, limited to 250 like I said. Muerte was a fire album from Axe Murder Boys. It's been a minute since Axe Murder Boys it's uh, put out Work Day, right? Actually, they put out Fatality after that. That EP that they put out. But Work Day dropped in, what, 2018? So, yeah, it's been four years since their last album, Fatality, dropped in 2020. That wasn't a bad listen. I liked Work Day better. I still think Work Day is their best album. But, uh, yeah, the vinyl's dope, man. And, you know, speaking of vinyl, and I probably should have brought this up when I was talking about Violent J and the walking home shit. People speculating, where's the walking home stuff? I see it every once in a while. Where's walking home? He talked about it, and we ain't never get it. Well, if you don't know, vinyl production, like producing vinyl records, there's a huge backlog with, like, all companies, all companies, up to almost a year wait from what I'm seeing from a lot of people. Um, there's a reason why Suicide Boy's last record didn't get a vinyl release until a couple months ago, and that shit dropped last year. There's a reason why we ain't get a Yum Yum Bedlam vinyl record yet. I'm sure we will, but yet, because there's just a huge backlog, and the Walking Home series, they kind of switched it up and said that Tuesday through Friday would come would be on seven inch vinyl. It would be pieces to a uh, what do you say a fucking game board, right? Board game, and uh, yeah. So if I had to speculate, who the fuck knows? Walking Home could be already recorded and done and ready to go. I you know I don't know, but it could be. And they just were just waiting for the supplies to get back from the manufacturer and get that shit out. That Walking Home Monday song, I fucks with it. I know some people didn't, but I like that song, man. And I'm walking home on a Monday night. That shit was fire. As I fucking shoved my microphone in my face. That shit was fucking dope. I, I really like that song. Dope way to start off. The walking home shit. And like I said back back when that shit did drop. Is it better than anything off Wizard of the Hood? Is it better than the first song off Wizard of the Hood? No. But honestly. I'm not going to go and compare it to the Wizard of the Hood. Because it's just unfair. There's not many albums. In general. That Psychopathic has released. That can really compete with Wizard of the Hood. Like that's just a bonafide juggalo classic like instant that was an instant fucking classic that was something people waited for a long ass time for it finally happened and it was just a it was a fucking certified classic as soon as it dropped but i'm still hyped for that walking home shit because that first single was dope man they're still capable of putting out dope music they are um, let's get back to the festivals. Gorefest. I don't remember if we talked about the full lineup from Gorefest, but if we did, fuck it. We're talking about it again. It's going down September 9th, 10th, and 11th at the Roxy, Denver, Colorado. One day past $20, three day past $40. Very fucking reasonable. Whole shitload of people are playing. Familiar names for me. Bake Low. Class. Cody Manson, Damian Quinn, Darby O'Trill, Donnie Menace, fucking, let's see, Insane Poetry, Lex the Hexmaster will be in the building, Light will be in the building, Make My Motherfucking Day, Triple MFD will be in the building, who else, Scum, of course, will be in the building, Smalls One, The Nameless, Twisted Insane, Be Sinister, and a whole bunch of other motherfuckers will be in the house for Gorefest. Free entry with valid military ID or out of state ID. So if you are military, you get in free any day or all three days. If you're out of state, you get in free any day you want or all three days if you want. That's dope. That's something that 
Scum and LSP have done with Gorefest for as long as I can remember. And it's a dope way to get out-of-state people to come to your shit, man. Because it costs a lot of money to travel to a show. It travel. It costs a lot. To travel to a show like if I were to catch a flight to Denver I'd have to I have to get a hotel and all that shit but I mean if I'm doing that anyway I don't mind paying for the ticket at that point right like if I'm going like the ticket really ain't the biggest expense out of the plane ticket and the hotel and all that shit but it's just that extra little incentive that you get to go to for free if you're out of state or if you're shit, if you're a military, you live right around the corner from the Roxy, walk your ass right in with your motherfucking military having ass. And thank you for your service. Yo. <laughs> uh, another drop that dropped this week that I'm going to talk about again. This song dropped when they, I don't know, at the gathering, dropped during the gathering. But the video is out right now. Strife with his single. Trailer Park Tears featuring Darby O'Trill produced by Maisie 666. This song is fire. Fire. So goddamn dope. I highly recommend checking this video. The video is even dope. The backstory to the video is dope. Like they did the music video before the song was even done or written. Like, first time I watched the music video, I didn't even notice Darby wasn't even rapping his shit in the song. I didn't. And then Strife put out that little backstory to the video, and that that, that was super dope, man. But yeah, the new video from Dot Strife, Darby O'Trill, Maisie 666, Trailer Park Tears. The song's been out for about a month now, and it's fire. It's a goddamn good song. One of my favorite songs that have come out this year. The shit is Dope, man. Really goddamn dope, man. Those dudes over there, Darby, um, Strife, that whole fucking crew over there, Devereaux's doing production for them dudes as well. It's uh, it, they got a, They got a dope thing going over there. And I fucks with it, man. I fucks with it. And that song's fucking fire. Like I said, slow news week, but we do have a couple anniversaries. Happy birthday. Oh, shit, it's your birthday. To Buckshot. Weirdo. Celebrating its five-year anniversary. Happy birthday to Buckshot. Weirdo. Um, This was before I, before I really came a Buckshot fan. What really put me on to Buckshot would probably be what... Actually, Buckshot started catching my attention with the Hell's Kitchen and the Paradigm Shift album. And then that Double Dragon dropped. And I was like, all right. I think I was sold from this point. Cabal dropped. And then just everything he's put out since, I've, I've been fucking with. But this is before that. Weirdo. I haven't heard the album. But I've seen a lot of people saying that it's their favorite Buckshot album. Features on here. Chris Calico. Tech Nine. Uh, Stevie Stone, Demi Demery, who just fucking kills it when he works with Buckshot. Ritz, Jelly Roll, Lil White, Bubba Sparks, motherfucking Violent J and Mad Child are on this album. Holy shit. Happy birthday to Buckshot's weirdo, five years, and another anniversary, Level Jumpers. Who remembers Level Jumpers back in the day? Soul 46, Scraps, FREs, YUG. Kind of like an honorary member to Level Jumpers. I mean, shit, he was listed in the booklet for Red Pyramid if you had the CD. Level Jumpers, this was after Scraps and ROC were done doing Half Breed. Freeze stopped doing the uh, the wicked shit, and they were just focusing on some just going back to the basics with hip-hop type shit. And the Red Pyramid, I mean, both albums Level Jumpers put out. Simply Complex is like one of the best albums to come out of Detroit, in my opinion. Uh, this scene, especially. And they, even the Red Pyramid, their second album. Happy uh, 20th anniversary to the Red Pyramid, man. I can't believe it's been 20 years. I remember when this shit dropped. 
I remember when Simply Complex dropped. 20 years. And if I get any of these anniversaries wrong, you can blame it on Legends Will Never Die. Because I get all my anniversary information from him. I do try to do my due diligence in making sure the shit is correct. But, uh, yeah. Shout out to the homie Legends. Um, <laughs> so don't blame me, motherfucker. You can't. It's all good. I don't give a fuck. But Level Jumpers, The Red Pyramid, Pick Yo Status. Go look up Level Jumpers, Pick Yo Status featuring YUG. That shit. Ugh. I fucking love that song. That beat. That's a funky ass beat. I love that song, man. Very fucking dope. But I, I love this whole fucking album, man. I like Simply Complex better, but Red Pyramid, it's up there. It's definitely a fucking uh, an underground gem. Y'all need to go. Because I think Simply Complex is a classic. I don't think Red Pyramid is necessarily a classic, classic but it's definitely one of those hidden gems you got to go look for peep that shit that's that virus independent shit bitch fuck you know about that if you a new ninja you don't know shit about that yeah shout out to chris again for sending in the donation go buy a shirt beneath dirt.com the link is up there on my link tree Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. I appreciate the support every single fucking week. Much love. I'm Ron Bone of the Beneath the Dirt Podcast. And until next time, I'm out. Peace. Peace.